guys, welcome to the Homestead. So today we're gonna to talk about the importance of keeping your canner in tip-top shape. And really, that can mean a number of things. What I'm gonna to concentrate today on though, however, is spare parts. Uh, so over the years we have, see, if you watched our videos, you know that we have done an awful lot of canning, outdoor canning, especially over a wood fire. Now, if you take a look at these canners, one is a lot cleaner than the other. This has a very dark bottom because this has spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours over the over the top of a large fire where we do most of our canning and the reason we do that is because if you take into account most people when they do their canning they do it over some sort of purchasable heat source uh, like propane or natural gas or whatever uh, maybe they do it over an electric burner and that uses a lot of electricity heat elements always take the most electricity. So that in mind, if you take into account an, you know, 79 cents can of green beans and you take in the time to harvest those beans, to put those beans in a canner and then pay for the propane to can those, that can of green beans, your can of green beans may be more in the ballpark of two to three dollars. So if you think about using wood heat, it's a lot cheaper, it's more plentiful. And so it costs a lot less. And so why I'm figuring, you know, why when we first started talking about this with my wife, we were like, why spend all of this money on these amazing canners where we can do so much, but then we have to spend money on a special propane unit, spend money on the propane itself. It just doesn't seem valuable anymore when you can do it over a wood fire. So then the question becomes, will these things handle a wood fire? Yes. They will. Now listen, I'm not getting paid by All American Canner to promote their products at all. Okay, I don't get any kickbacks. I don't have any affiliate links or nothing. But the reality is everyone's looking at canning today or getting back into canning. You guys know if you're into canning that these things are like gold right now, canning lids or canning jars. You can't, this is like finding a gold mine at the store if you can come across these things because there's just none to be had because people are buying them up like crazy. People are getting into canning because they see our world right now, they see our economic environment, and it's making people a little bit nervous. So, they're getting into canning. But what if I was to take your canner away from you? What do you mean by that, Zach? I don't understand. Well, think about it, okay? These things require parts that wear out, and I'm gonna show you something in a minute. The parts that wear out on these things sometimes can render your canner useless, okay? What if you didn't have propane anymore? What if you couldn't get propane? Have you ever thought about your canner working over a wood fire, a wood heat source? Because it can, at least these can, some of the other ones cannot. I, I wouldn't trust some of these other ones, these paper thin aluminum ones, you know, worth a dime. These are super strong, thick, machined aluminum, okay? I, I believe they're, they're made from solid aluminum and they're just milled out. I don't know about that for sure, but looks like it the way they they look to appear to be made. These things are solid. There's a reason why the All American Canner is number one when it comes to quality. It'll last literally a lifetime if you take care of it. So, and we have abused. You can look at this thing. It's a it's been abused, used and abused, literally set on an open fire. And we have videos on that. Please check our season videos out. But it's been used and abused, and it's still going strong. It's as strong as the first day we started using it right now. It's as strong today as the first day we started using it. it. It'll work. No problem. But what if some of these things break? What if, what if it breaks? What if some of these parts break? And they do. What are you going to do? If I was to take away your canner tomorrow, what would you do? What about this little regulator here? What if I took that away from you? What if you lost it? Would you be able to still use your canner? Do you have a second one? You know, they sell spare parts for these things, but do you have a spare part to replace this? If you lost it, because you know what, if you have kids like we do, you know, you might have a kid who plays with this, misplaces it, takes it out unknowingly out into the backyard to play with, and then tosses it into a creek somewhere. So who knows? Who knows what could happen? If you have children, you know, it could get flushed on a toilet for all you know. And then when it comes time to using it, what are you going to do? What about the safety relief valve? They sell spares of those too. Do you have one? What if one day you were out there using your canner and this, your safety relief valve, having worn out after so many years of use, popped out and you needed to replace it? Could you do that? Do you have an extra? Do you have an extra or two? They sell these. 
But not having this or one of these renders your canner useless. You know these little handles that tighten down your lid? You know, they wear out. You know how I know? Look at that. They do wear out. All that heat over time makes this plastic, this hard plastic that these are made out of, it makes them brittle. Yeah, so what if one of yours snapped off apart completely, which, which has happened to us before? What do you do? Do you have a spare? These spares, nice little spares. Brand new handles you can screw on. You see, everything about your canner, if it's a good canner, like the All-American, it will have the ability to switch out spare parts. So if any part of it fails, you can easily swap it out for something new. But in times like this, when everyone is going absolutely nuts, trying to think about what may happen in our economic future, you know, they're learning about canning, they're trying to can, they're trying to can new things, they're looking for materials, they're looking for parts, they're looking for good canning equipment. Um, don't forget these things right here, because things like this, if enough of them go out and you can't tighten your lid out anymore, it takes away your canner. And that would be disastrous. That takes away your family's ability to store food for your pantry. Listen, you don't have to tell me. I know these things are expensive. The All-American Canner, there's a reason why you pay so much for one. It's because it's superior quality. It's because everything on it can be replaced and switched out easily. You know, anyone can do it, okay? And so that's one of the reasons why it costs so much. Right here, what I have is the 941, which is, I believe up to date is still the largest canner they make. This one is the 921, which is a little bit smaller. We got this for inside use. That's why it looks so much cleaner. This one we got specifically because we wanted to use it outside. Um, it's a large canner. I think, it's, I think it fits. It's a 21 quart canner, canner but it'll actually only fit 19 quarts. Um, we've used this for so many different things over the years. Uh, animal stock, uh, lamb, beef, turkey, chicken stock. Um, canning all varieties of meats, um, produce, green beans, cucumbers, salsas, um, all kinds of things we, we've used this for. It, it has produced an incalculable amount of food for our family. And so we've used it very heavily and it's still going strong. And we, over the years we've had to replace parts, no doubt about it. We've had to replace parts on it because they wear out. Uh, and so it's one of the reasons I have spare parts for this always on hand and I'm constantly getting back into figuring out, okay, what do we need for the upcoming canning season next year? You're always thinking about the future when it comes to this, because this is your food production for the future. Food production for you know your family in the days ahead. And so you have to think about things like that. Um, uh, obviously, I don't have my wife here anymore who can help me do these things, and but I'm gonna have to do them. I, and I may not have to be doing them on as large of a scale as I used to, or that we used to, um, but I will continue doing them. Uh, we have an evaporator that we did most of our salsa on and some of our other things that we can use that for just water bath canning. But for as far as pressure canning goes, doing things like beans um, and different meats and keeping meats in the pantry. So that all we have to do is pop that top and uh, put that uh, meat into our, our cooking pot. And there we go, we're off to the races uh, with a meal that can be quickly prepared because we did the hard work before. Let me see something else about this because there's so much fervor out there right now about canning and canning lids and canning jars and, and pressure canners. Uh, the world's just going nuts. Keep in mind, and this is something that we learned through experience uh, and we learned through people who have way more experience than we did. You can use your canning lids more than once. And I know some people will turn their nose up at that and they'll say that that's crazy, it's unsafe, and perhaps it is. But there's a lot of old timers out there who've been doing it for generations. You can use your canning lids more than once, uh, sometimes up to three times. As long as the canning lid remains undamaged and the rubber seal on the inside is intact, you can use it again, okay? And uh, I probably wouldn't use it more than twice or three times if I was really desperate, maybe three times. Uh, but you can use them more than once. So don't throw your canning lids away if they're undamaged. If they, if they look to be in pristine shape and they have the rubber seal on the inside intact and they're not dented or bent in any way, don't throw those canning lids away. If, if, it, if push came to shove and you needed something to be able to preserve some food, I would use them again. Uh, just make sure to check your seals and um, you know, be cautious, be careful in everything you do when it comes to that. But uh, don't be afraid to do that if you have to. 
Uh, Tatler lids, it's a mixed bag. Everyone talks about Tatler lids. Um, but we've had friends who have had mixed experiences with those. Some good, some bad. And so we've never used them. We've never had a major issue um, with just using regular canning lids. So, okay, there you go. Stuff is like gold these days, amazing. But uh, leave your comments below. Do you have an all-American canner? Yes, again, I know they're expensive, but it's the only thing, it's the only brand canner I would definitely trust using outside on, over an open fire. Now, the all-American canner people, they would probably turn their nose up at me and tell me I was crazy and, that, and tell everyone else that this was a huge safety issue and not to do it. But after years of doing it, I know it can be done, it can be done fine, there's no problems. Uh, just monitor your safety levels, monitor your levels. Um, check out our videos on how we did it in the past. We have those videos in our season episodes on how we used an open fire with our pressure canner. Very easy to do, and it can be done safely. Okay, there you go. The All-American Canner. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time on an American Homestead. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>